In the last section of my Steam guide, we just went over creating our own test chamber. You will have watched a video of me creating exactly what you see here. You can either follow along with that, or you can create your own test chamber. That choice is completely up to you. Regardless, we are now at the point where we're ready to begin playtesting our own creation. Now, when we playtest, we are looking for ways to break our own puzzle. And by breaking, what I mean is solving them in a way that we never intended. So before we get started, I recommend saving your puzzle, go to File and Save, and then Rebuild. Now what Rebuild will do is it will compile your puzzle so you can actually play it. You can also click F9 on your keyboard. Now keep in mind, every time you make a change, you need to rebuild it, otherwise it won't take effect. If you've already rebuilt your puzzle, you can click Tab on your keyboard to switch between the game and the editor, and it's seamlessly as well. So we're gonna get started. Um, I've just rebuilt my puzzle. I've made two major changes since the video um, that you last saw. I've changed these cube droppers to standard cubes instead of zombie cubes. And the reason for that is I was having a bit of a problem with them continuously dying and then they would just never respawn. And I'm pretty sure that's a bug. And then I changed the portable surface from here to here. And that's because you could never solve the puzzle otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a few things that you can look out for in your own design, um, kind of obvious things that might break your puzzle. So I'm going to show you one thing here. I'm going to get into position. So here's one thing. I initially, what I want to do with this is I want players to launch themselves from here into this cubby hole. Now, it's not very obvious, and players can actually right now solve it because I've had the made the timer a little bit too generous. They can solve it by just placing a portal here and like down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this timer here. I'm gonna make it almost half, so put it to six, down from 10. And I'm gonna make everything on this wall here non-portable. And I'm just gonna make this one square portable. So what this does is in a sense kind of shows the player that there is a reason this square here is, is white and the rest are gray. At least that's kind of what I hope for. So now I've made those changes, um, I can either rebuild it or continue showing you a few more things. I'm gonna wait to rebuild it as there's a few more changes I want to make. So right now, all I need to do is I need to grab that cube, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. Once I have the cube here, I can place it on a portable surface and return to where I was just a moment ago. Now, the point is I want players to use this, this portable surface up here and then put one on the cube and the faith plate will launch the cube into the cubby hole. Right now though, I don't even need to do that. I can simply place a portal inside here and then place one on the cube and that'll make it so the cube completely skips the faith plate, making the faith plate in essence useless. So a way I can fix this, if I switch back to the editor, I can just make every portable surface in here non-portable. I would highly recommend doing ceilings as well. Now the reason I didn't change the surfaces in here is because I kind of like how they look and because there's a fizzler right inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and continue editing our puzzle and see if there's anything else we can do. I'm just going to double check the other side here. So right now I feel that might be a little bit too generous, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the timer on that one. I'm going to make it about six seconds. I 
And now for the other side, what I want people to do is I want them to use this huge extended ceiling and I want them to place a portal on the cube and quickly run to this button as it's dropping. Now I'm pretty sure I've got the timing almost perfect in this one. Yep, I do. Now, you'll see here the cube bounced a fair amount there and it hit this object right here. Now that's fine, but I'm pretty sure that it's kind of almost random. It might go into this fizzler here. So I want to change where this lands and I want to put it in a safer spot. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to adjust the landing spot for the cube. And I'm going to place it like right by a wall. So I'm going to put it on this corner right here and it should consistently land in that corner because it will be blocked from going into the fizzler. So I made a bunch of changes now and I should be ready at this point to begin um, basically testing it again to see if there's any more problems and we'll also test those timers. So I'm going to go to file and rebuild. And this can take a moment or two depending on the size of your map. We spawned again and all of our changes have been made, so it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to test the other side first. Now I don't like how that looks, so this is a, also a good opportunity to make any cosmetic changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just adjust these and make these non-portable, just for purely cosmetic reasons. And I'm also going to make uh, this surface here portable because um, I've had issues sometimes with fizzler surfaces like down here. If I try and make a portal down here, it might not spawn right away. So this here um, should work almost all the time. And I want people to launch themselves. So it's, it's especially important that that's, that's easy to do. You'll see now that you can't create a portal in there. So you can't exploit with the cube. And I think that's that's a perfect amount of time, and it gives players uh, just enough time to do it if they launch themselves, and not enough time if they were to just place a portal down here. I'm just checking here to see if I can place a portal up here and skip going through the fizzler, which I can't. For the most part, that looks pretty good. And I think mean, that's a pretty good amount of time as well. So I'm going to test this cube to see if it no longer um, bounces like crazy when it goes through the fate plate. That's perfect. It's much more consistent this way. And besides small cosmetic things, such as um, placing more lights in places, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it is right now. I might make some more changes before I place it on the workshop, but hopefully that gave you a general idea of things to look for and things to consider when you play test your map. Um, thanks for watching.